stinking, thinking. Stinking, thinking. Yeah. I heard this from uh, Chris Leader. He runs the Leader's Ed. He's a national coach, and I was watching his video. And he said, stinking, thinking. I just took that, paused the video, and came up with my own speech. I don't even know what he said about it, but I decided I could come up with my own. And I want to, before I want to start with something positive, I want to show you something that I thought was amazing that happened. And it's because this person got rid of stinking thinking. I really like saying that. I always want to start rapping. Chrissy, can you come here, please? You, you folks heard that uh, we went to the Coral Crater and we did those things, right? Yeah. And I will tell you that we heard over and over again what Chrissy <laughs> saying, Chrissy. leading up to it. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm afraid of heights, I'm afraid of heights. Oh my God, I'm come over there and keep what? your ears for a bit. What did I get myself okay. into? So here's what, what we have to, I, uh, here's a video that I, I could easily pull up, but this is what we have to do, okay? So we have to do, we're about, what, 100 feet up? I keep making it higher and higher. Yeah, you have to do Keep up with zero. No, it's like it's zero five feet. Five. So we're doing this. And you see how that, that was pretty hard. So I don't have one. I wish the Chrissy one I didn't pull up, but she had to do the same. There she is, see? She's on that one already, so she's happy. There's 18 of these we have to do. And then we really are really high up. And there are so many times when you're standing on, you know, there's these platforms. Even if we felt we're tied to a thing, but it's still scary. And she kept saying, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. And there's one, and it was probably one of the easier ones, but we didn't know that because it looked scary, where there's this like a surfboard thing. Yeah, and you're way up, and you have to step on it, and you were sliding to the other side, and you feel like you're gonna fly off. And there's nothing to grab on. Yeah, and then you're going like that, you're going back and forth. And, and so Chrissy, she got lucky they're filming a commercial, so she got to bra get brave for like 10 minutes as they're filming the commercial. The guy, a bunch of jumps next to us. But then she did, and she was able to overcome that fear. And by the end, how did you feel? Good. Yeah, it allowed her. <laughs> she's, she's focused, pointed. It allowed her. It allowed her to go to the Bruno Mars concert and experience the whole thing because she was way up high, right? Yeah. Well, you were way up high. Damn, that would have fit in my story. <laughs> okay, you can go back. Here's the point, though. She had, she had stinking drinking. She had stinking thinking in her brain. We were tied on. We were not going to fall. <laughs> there was, we won't be able to go anywhere. But we were all still scared because we were thinking about what would happen. She overcame that. And it's awesome. And that's what we have to do in our business, especially in a changing market. So let's go to our famous fill in the blanks for stinking thinking. We don't all have to rely on Fran. <laughs> so here's the first one. Open house blank because I blank pick up a blank. Open house rocks because I can pick up the clock. That is <laughs> the good thinking. <laughs> What's the stinking <laughs> thing? Open house sucks and can't. Never pick up Open house sucks because I never pick up a client. I will tell you, there are certain people like like Bohakuola, right? Like Melissa. There's certain people that tell me all the time, I love open house because I pick up clients. Yeah. Ellen just told me today, they're all my clients. All the people that came in, I see them all as my buyer. Mm -hmm. Then everybody else, everybody else comes up to me, oh man, I just open a house. And I'm like, you know, everyone has a client. We know that's BS, right? Mm -hmm. We know everyone has a client is BS. How, much, how many percent of them actually have clients? Less than 10. Less than 10, why? Because they don't have a buyer's representation contract and the agent didn't send them there. So technically they're not their client. Now you have a choice to make. Are you gonna compete or not compete? That's your choice. You get to decide that. In today's world, every industry there's competition except it seems like Oceanic Cable, they don't have competition. Everybody else, yeah. they do. Oh <laughs> or special, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I just oh, no, 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 no. never works now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. everyone has this competition. Yeah. Is competition good for the consumer? Yeah. Yes. So compete. At Open House Compete, you have to ask them, have you signed a buyer's representation contract that the agent send you here? If not, you make the choice, you compete. I'm telling you less than 5% use buyer's rep contracts. And nowadays, it's the, the buyer that finds their own buyer, their own property to come in because they have the internet and because the market's been so hot, that's how they've been doing it. Okay, so let's move on to another one. So change that stinking thinking to what Guacola said. Next one. I know this sounds negative, that's why I have to start with the positive first thing. I hate prospecting. Prospecting 
Door knocking. Door, door knocking. Whatever you want. I don't care. That's thinking, thinking. Then don't do that. Do something else. The worst thing you can do is just hate. Don't be a hater on everything. You know what? I love, I'm going to show my, I, I always show this. You guys see me do this all the time. Right? I'm going to do this all the time. All right. SOI is Sphere of Influence. OH is Open House. Networking. That's all the type of networking. Cold calling, door knocking, and marketing. And here's how we do the hate and the stinky thinking, right? We do this all the time. Fizbos are mean. Expires, uh, there are none. They have bad phone numbers. Sphere of Influence, I call everybody I know. Or I want to test out my skills on people I don't know. I want to try with strangers first. Open House, today's not Saturday or Sunday. Networking, no events, I can pick up my kids. Cold calling, I hate that. What I can, I hate that. I'll do some marketing. And I'll get a 0.5% return on my marketing. So instead of stinking thinking, don't think about what you hate, think about what you're going to do to get your leads today. Okay. Buyers are. Liars. Yeah, they're like, why, why do we say buyers are liars because why? It's not they're liars, they don't know. Here's the thing is, we need the buyers to be liars. Buyer, we say buyers are liars because they say they want one thing and they end up buying something else. We need that because that's our role. And a robot, the internet can't do that. Our role is to ask them the right questions to help them think because they haven't thought it through. They only think three bedroom, two bath, with a yard, under 400,000, no maintenance fee in town. They haven't thought it through. Our job is to help think it through. Next one, I can't blank with those blank commission companies. And I want you to just cross the whole thing out now because that world has now changed. And now we're going to dominate that. And now we're going to earn all our commission because sellers will hire the best quality service provider, and that's you. Because they know it's harder to sell. My sellers are on, are in. My sellers are in fantasy land. <laughs> That's yeah. They think they can sell for 1.2 million and it is worth 600,000. 600,000. <laughs> and it, 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 here's the thing though it's not their fault, it's our fault because we haven't educated them. And usually, after we've educated them, we didn't stand up and say, Listen, it's not going to sell for that amount. If you want to sell for that amount, you got to wait till the next cycle. Because every cycle we see property values go up, almost double. So if you want to get that 1.2 million, you just got to wait to the next cycle. And then they say, well, I want to sell now. I went through that. I got to move. And say, well, then we got to lower the price. And then they say, well, I don't want to lower the price. I want to sell at 1.2 million. And then you say, well, you got to wait till the next cycle. And then they say, <laughs> but I, I need to sell now. I need to sell now. And you say, well, then you got to lower the price. And then they, it just keeps going. And it's our, it's our job to educate them and tell them what our professional opinion is even though you're not gonna get the listing because in a market that's going down, remember we've changed, we're changing our mindset because the market's changing. I always wanna use purple. Before it was like this. So if we list here, right, we knew, I mean, I'm sorry, if, if it's worth this and we list here, we knew it was eventually gonna catch up. So we took that listing, right? We took that listing. Now. It's the opposite. We list here. It's worth this. We know they've got to lower their price. It's never going to catch up. So if they don't want to lower their price, we don't take the listing. And that's what I said last week, and I said last week, unless they're willing to put it on the market, and we're going to get some type of benefit, like additional leads and branding for us. That's OK. If not, don't take the listing. All right, any other stinking thinking? I thought that was fun. I probably will go back and listen to the video, see if I was close to what he said. Okay. You get the point. The point is the market has changed, we need to adjust. We have to change our mindset, just like the buyers have. The buyers, it happens naturally. It doesn't happen naturally to us. We get stuck in the past. The faster we adjust, the more opportunity for us, because we'll be faster than the competition. All right.